everyone. So in this week's video, I am going to be showing you the do's and don'ts of longlining. And this is Finley, our lovely little breaker that we've got in at the moment. So I'm going to show you all of the things to do and not do when you're longlining. On your tack list, you are going to need a bridle with a snaffle bit, never longline with a stronger bit. You always want to encourage the horse to be as soft as possible in the mouth. So riding with a snaffle and longlining with a snaffle is going to be the best way to do that. You need two lunge lines with decent clips on the end, a stirrup leather and a saddle with a pair of stirrups. Now, not safety stirrups. They've got to be a full iron of stirrup, the whole loop, not one with a bit that flicks out the side or a piece of elastic on the edge. Do look after your long lines. If somebody passes me a lunge line that has knots in it, I will throw it back in their face because you can't let it slip through your hand gently. It will bump on the stirrup. It won't give you a true soft feeling on the horse's mouth. So if you're planning to ride afterwards, which I will be doing with Finley, you can leave your reins on and twist them up through the throat lash. Equally, you can just take them off. So the reason that we need a stirrup leather is because when we're long lining, we, we lope our lunge line through the stirrup leather. Now, if we did that and then just didn't tie the stirrup leathers together, they would fly around and your steering would be seriously patchy. So I'm gonna show you how I just attach the stirrups together with a stirrup leather. As you can see, I've got the stirrups quite low down. If you had them too high up, the lunge lines might flick over your horse's bum and then you're equally not going to have any steering. <laughs> so I've clipped it on this side and I'm going to repeat the same thing with this stirrup. Always making sure that the clip is facing outward in case it gets unclipped on the horse's face. This has never happened to me, but you just never know. You can't be too careful. And then I'm just going to pick up the other lunge line off his back, very slowly walk behind him and allow him to walk away. And this is important. They don't want to be stopped dead still when they're feeling a bit like you're walking behind them. So just let them move away gently and then go to stop when you're in a bit more of a relaxed place. Good boy. Good lad. Come on. You were long lining a horse that's never been long lined and you knew that they were going to be a little bit green and wobbly about it. If you have another person and they have a lead rope, when you first get started, you set the long lines up, the other person has the lead rope at the front, and then they walk and you long line. So the horse understands because it knows about being led, that it understands to follow the person that's leading it, and then to get used to the feeling of the long lines. This can be a really good way to introduce it if you know that the horse is prone to being a bit worried about new things. So now that he's nice and relaxed, we've had a little walk around, something I want to talk about is being organised. So I always hang my lunge line over my hand and then place my hand over the rein. If I was to place my hand under the rein and he pulls, it's really not hard, it's not hard for him to pull it out of my hand basically. So your hand is strongest when you're holding the lunge line like a rein in your hand like when you're riding. So be organised, have even loops, hand over the rein and you won't have any problems. That I can guarantee. Do use your voice when you're long lining. It's really important that they can hear you and understand your voice is their cue to move forward. So just when I get started, I ask Finley to walk on and Finley walk on. And I put a click on the end. You will learn how many sounds you can make with your voice when you are long lining. So just when you're starting out, just get them walking around the edge of the arena, nice and steady. Ooh. If he gets a little bit quick, I just take a little gentle half halt in the hand like I would if I was riding. And then I ask him to just be relaxed. I don't hang on. Don't ever just hold on the rein forever and ever because that's not going to make him have a nice soft mouth. You half halt and then you release. And the idea is that he waits on his own legs, not on my arms. I don't like skiing. Sometimes you ski, but not all the time. Ideally not. When you're asking your horse to stop, 
I always like to put a few words in front of the command. So I go, and Finley walk. Good boy, walk on. This means that it's a really gradual stop rather than a harsh, sudden pressure on the rein. Okay. When we're steering the horse, it's really important that we keep a pressure on both reins in a gentle way. So you see, I don't suddenly let one get very flat, and then when I turn left, the same thing. I go left pressure, but I keep the right pressure a little bit tight as well. So when you've mastered being able to walk calmly around the edge, stop and start, and turn through the middle of the arena, then we can do a bit of double lunging. And this is where you're really gonna teach the horse to be from your voice. They're gonna learn a lot about the connection on the hand. So as you can see, I've always got a gentle connection on the rein. It's never that I'm pulling his nose in and short so that his neck is short. Have a little look. But he's got his nose down in a soft way. And something I'm always very careful of is that I am slightly behind his shoulder. I never get in front of his shoulder. As soon as I get in front of his shoulder, He's probably going to slow down and I'm going to find it really difficult to keep him travelling forward. Finley, stand. And he's just learning about the connection in the rain, so I don't worry too much about where his head ends up standing. Good boy. And Finley, walk on. And it's important to note that before I started the long lining process, Finley had his teeth done to make sure that he's really comfortable in his mouth so that he can get used to wearing a bit without any pain involved. That is top tip number one. Good boy. I really want him to work from my voice predominantly. It's not ideal if you're having to really chase them with the lunch line, but at the same time, if you were lunging a lazy horse and you wanted them to go forward, I would use the back lunge line, so my right hand on this rein, to chase them forward a little bit with the lunge line. As I said, I don't really need to do that with him as he's very forward going. So there, he's looking like he might go off in the wrong direction, so I just encourage him a little bit with the left hand, and then I release the pressure so that he doesn't hang on the rein, but he does keep going in the direction I want him to go. So as you can see, Emily is now doing a bit of long lining with Finley, and I just wanted to go through a couple of the things that are really easy to start making mistakes with that are then going to make it really difficult for you to help the horse with the long lining. So you can see here that there's a jump, this oxer here with the red and white pole. Now a little minute ago Emily was getting a little bit close to that so he was sort of bouncing off it and not making an even circle. So it's always making sure that you've got ample space and that you're not creating something difficult for the horse so that every time he's moving past something he was sort of almost running out at the jump. I know obviously we're not facing him to jump the jump but it's just not a positive thing to start encouraging them to do. So if you're long lining your horse and you find that your lunge lines end up looking a bit like this what you can do is just demonstrate, please, Emily. You just drop the whole lunge line and then go back to holding them the correct way up. You're putting your hand over, not under the rein. And then when you've got a steady moment and they're not rushing about like we have now, then you can just take a moment, as so, and just reorganize yourself, going back to holding the whole of the lunge line and then you're nice and organized again. And make sure, Emily, that you hold the end of the lunge line so you hold the loop. So you've always got that really steady part that if they really ran away, you would be holding that consistent part of the lunge line all the time. Here comes a bit of a tricky bit. I want to change the rein from a circle. Now there's a few ways that you can do it. You could ask them to stop, you physically walk to the other side, or you can do it like this. So it's all about shortening and lengthening the lunge lines at the right moment. So here, I take the right one, good boy, and I let the left one get longer. Then you see, then I don't end up interfering with his mouth. Good boy, steady. And I can get a bit more organised then here. I shorten up my left one, 
and I've got an even pressure again on both reins. That one will take a bit of practice. Now that Finley's done a good bit of work today, I'm going to ask him to stop and stand and show you guys how to basically become untangled from your long lines. So we're going to ask him to stop and stand. And then my best, the best way that I tend to do it is I just drop my outside one like this. Good boy, standing like that. And then I walk in. Good boy. I take it through the stirrup. And then I have one side like this. And I go to the other side. I unclip it. I drop it on the floor and then I go and wind it up from the handle end first. This is nice and close. <laughs> By doing it this way round, you're not winding a big long line shaped snake in around their back legs, ready to get run over. I said the wrong thing a minute ago, hence why we're all laughing. So this way, you make sure that they stay nice and relaxed, they understand that the lunge line isn't chasing them across the floor and everybody gets to go home without breaking their arms. Winning. I do this with all of my horses on a weekly basis, maybe fortnightly for the more advanced horses. It's a really good way of reminding them of that gentle connection in the hand onto both reins. I also really like it because it means I can feel the horse and see the horse, not like when you're riding where you can only feel it. So this is a really good tool that is very underused that can help us learn so much about our horse's way of going. So that's the end of this week's video guys, if you liked it please give it a like, equally if you've got any questions about things I might have missed out then please leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. We gotta lose it. We gotta lose it. We gotta lose it.